Today's morning coffee vinyl side, Zero Mustel, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, 1975. This reading of the 1957 Dr. Seuss classic by the great comedic stage and film actor Zero Mustel was produced in 1975, almost 10 years after the animated version of the story narrated by Boris Karloff that we are all familiar with. Zero's most famous stage role was as Tebe in the original 1964 Broadway production of Fiddler on the Roof, which started a late career renaissance that saw him apply his comedic talents to the stage role of Pseudolus in A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum in 62, and its subsequent 1966 film adaptation, and as Max Bialystok in Mel Brooks' original film production of The Producers. Like yesterday's morning coffee vinyl side artist Burl Ives, Mustel found himself being accused of being a communist sympathizer in the 40s and was also blacklisted and was later called before Congress to testify. Yet unlike Ives, who downplayed his own political association with communism while naming names and tossing others under the bus for a free pass, Mustel testified telling his inquisitors to go pound sand. And he did it in such a way as to make them all look very foolish. He won the respect of many blacklisted entertainers and industry professionals, but remained out of work for more than a decade until the tide turned and he was slowly welcomed back into the industry by maverick directors and producers that wanted him more than they feared political retribution. Now, as much as I like the idea of this album, it doesn't really work. The sound effects from the early Moog synthesizers in the soundtrack overpower the vocal in the mix, and Zero's read is overly dramatic and very hard to follow. I can't see kids getting much enjoyment out of it or even being able to follow the story at all. Now, Side 2 is a selection of traditional Christmas songs from all around the world sung in English by Alan Mills. Again, not very appealing, but novel enough to make me go, hmm, a couple of times. Zero passed away at the age of 62 of a reported aortic aneurysm while prepping for the role of Shylock in The Merchant of Venice in 1977, but he'd been of ill health for many years, following an accident in 1960 where he was run over by a bus. But I can't stop thinking about the choices both he and Burl Ives made with respect to how they handled being blacklisted and the manner in which each man testified before Congress. Standing up for your principles and being true to who you are in the face of injustice and persecution came with an enormous personal cost for zero. But trading the lives and fates of other men to secure your comfort and further your personal ambition while denying yourself must have come with a cost too. It's the cost of having to look at your own visage in the mirror and not being able to meet its gaze without feeling shame. Be damned how soft your bed is if you can't sleep at night, right? Of the two choices, I know which one I'd choose. Do you? <laughs>